Hey guys, it is Carl Brown for Guitar Lessons 365.com. Got a classic for you today that I haven't gotten to, been a lot of requests, I'm finally getting around to do it. We're going to do uh, You Can Be Mine by Guns N' Roses, off the Use Your Illusion album, one of them, I forget which one. Um, so anyway, before we get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring the little notification bell, of course, so you'll know when I release a new video. And please check out my Guitar Academy, too. It's at guitarlessons365.com. It's called the GL365 Academy. It's got all my custom guitar courses. I've got a great community there. I do live chats with uh, Academy members every week. Uh, so it's really cool, uh, and those courses cover everything from technique, improvisation, ear training, guitar tone tutorials, everything. So hopefully you'll check it out. All right, so let's get into this track. We are tuned down a half step as for uh, Guns N' Roses and Slash do a lot. Um, so hopefully you'll know what those notes are. Um, it's just tuning everything down. So a set of E, A, D, G, B, E is E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. So you probably know that already. So, pretty uh, standard stuff. So let's jump in first with this intro. We have like this really cool drum intro. Um, and we have some harmonics to come in that kind of sound like, uh, it's weird, it almost sounds like they could be on a 12 string bass and it sounds almost, but we're gonna do it on a guitar. Uh, all we're gonna do is, you can kind of have your volume a little bit rolled off so you can kind of clean up the signal. Or you can just do this with a foot pedal, kind of rolled, uh, like a volume pedal rolled back first. And you're going to pick basically these two notes. You're going to pick the D uh, string 7th fret harmonic and then the 7th fret harmonic on the B string. So hit those together. So if you can do that. And just kind of swell that in, just let it kind of like feed back and all that stuff. So th there's some harmonics there. I didn't want to kind of leave those out and stuff. Uh, but the real meat of the intro is this. This is going to be Slash's part here. goes into the verse there. All right, so let's start um, with this part. Um, so we have some double stops here at the 16th fret there on the G and the B string together. So I'm just playing this with my uh, ring finger across those two. And when I do it, I'm going to kind of bend it down slightly. Just pull it down to the floor. And then you can release that bend down to the 14th fret double stops. So that's gonna be at 14 on the G and the B. Just with my index finger. Sorry, this. Then over to 16 on the D, and then back to those two 14 double stops. Sorry, this. Now I do the exact same thing down two frets. Repeat. All right, so here we kind of speed it up and then do each one a couple times before moving down. So I did it twice faster there and then the same thing two press the lower. Keep going. And then last time, right before we start heading into the, the kind of the main riff, we hit this. So it's just like, just kind of repeating that, that 14th fret on the D to the, the 12th fret uh, double stops. Uh. All right, so we have this all together. All 
All right, so we have a lower part here, which I'll cover in a second, a um, second guitar part. So then Slash goes into this melody, kind of slide in the ninth fret on the G, then on the B string, the ninth fret, then slide into 10, and then into 12, and then bend it up. So we have this. All right, so underneath that, we had the, that, that riff kind of kicks in. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but slash this part after this, right at the end of the intro section before the vocals come in, there's a little kind of blues bass uh, lick down here. Kind of, it's just one of those standard kind of blues things. A little bit lower in the mix though, so I'm not gonna worry about getting it too exactly, exactly like I can do it, because it's one of those kind of just wing it things. Um, but he starts though with a bend at the fifth fret on the B string, and then we'll uh, release that bend, and then we go back into the, that bend again, and then do, do a standard blues lick, which you probably played before. It's kind of one of those things, which is the second fret on the high E, then five two on the B into a bend on the fourth fret of the G string. So it's just what... I'm just kind of one of those things. Just repeat it a couple times. Um, it's kind of the only lead lick I'm not really worried about getting is note for note, Zach, because it's kind of just kind of a, an afterthought, really. All right, now, underneath that, um, we have um, basically an octave lower version of this riff. But I've been watching some videos from um, like back in, on the Usual Illusion tour, and they had both guitars playing the the up here the upper octave. But on the actual recording, you can hear this. All right, so really cool rhythm part there. So we're just starting, if we know, if you remember what we did earlier, and you can, you know how to take things down an octave, that's all we're doing. So instead of four and two, I mean, I'm sorry, that 16, 14 here, it's an octave lower, four and two. And then the two zero, up to the open G string and B string, over to two on the D, and back to the G. So just an octave lower that we did. All right, so from, you know, so I'm just not gonna go into that part too much. Hopefully you know how to move a thing down an octave on the guitar. Um, so then we just get into, coming out of that, we had this low E power chord build up. That's what Slash is doing there. You hear that, that lead line started coming in? All right, so from there, we go into the actual main riff. And it's over that that you'll see Slash it at. All right, so let's get to this main riff. Really fun riff to play. So it sounds like this. So we're going to be playing double stops again. Uh, the second fret on the D and the G together. And then the fourth fret on the D and the G. So You can play this with just one finger too with your ring finger if you want. 
if you're so inclined. But we have... So you just go back and forth between those two double stops. Two, four, two, four, two. Then take it down to the fourth uh, fret double stop at the, on the A string and the D string. And then the second fret double stop on those same two strings. So this. And then back to the uh, fourth fret double stops off the A and the D. So from here, hit that a couple times, then go back to the second fret ones, and then back to the fourth fret. So all together we have this. Repeat. And then you're going to do it again, but it have a little different ending. Right here, after this, instead of going back to this, we have this. Uh, you can actually... Kind of the E power chord. Um, you, you can... You kind of almost hear when he does the same... When you play the E power chord here, you can lift up to the open A and D in there, and then back. But keep getting that low E string in there. So we have this. Repeat. Kind of back to the first version of it. Alright, so that's kind of the main riff of the song. He kind of does the F sharp version of it and then down to the E version. So one more time. Alright, now from there it takes us to the verse, which is kind of a uh, a lower dynamic version of that main riff. Looks like this. That leads us to the chorus. So uh, now this is just starting on the D string here. Uh, just a fourth fret there. So what he does a lot is he'll hit like the second fret double stop at the A and the G. Uh, I'm sorry, the G string and the uh, the B string together. So this. All right, and then back to that fourth fret D. And then we're going to do some double stops here off the second fret of the B and the high E. Kind of, he's really trying to make it kind of a little staccato sound to it. So we got that little fourth fret on the D, and then, and then back to the, uh, the, the G and the B double stop, and then back to the fourth fret, and then the top two strings uh, a couple times. So it is. And ba basically here, he does this, which is just kind of bringing this up to a higher pitch strings. And kind of really, you might want to palm mute it quite a bit too. So it's just uh, the second fret double stop up the G and the B, and then the G and the B double stop at the fourth fret. So, the, so it's like kind of the same pattern we did before. Just, and then you just take it down to, just four or two, just the single notes on the D string. So the... And then you're back to the beginning here, which is that fourth fret by itself. OK, 
Okay, so the second time around, a little bit different ending. Instead of going, it goes like this. It goes the four zero, and then we're gonna go down to the E chord, which is just the second fret of there on the D string, first fret on the G, open B and open high E string. So you're gonna pick once again the, the just the D string version. And then it's good to hit those notes that are kind of accented on top of those double stars, those open strings, and up here with just some upstrokes. It gives it that kind of snappy quality to it. So we have this. And then you're back to the beginning of the root, the same previous version. All right, so all together we have this. All right, so after, when you get to that part in the riff, they make it sound a little bit bigger to kind of turn it around back to the beginning. And what they do is it's kind of the main riff version of those double stop. It's just kind of a little that we did earlier. So those double stops off the D and the G over to the double stops off the A and the D. Just do it once, that little run real quick, then back. verse kind of messed it up there but you know what I mean so we're just gonna do the verse and then it has that little ending then repeat the verse and then we have that big ending again and then here we kind of do it a little bit different because we're leading into the chorus here. Kind of, instead of going like a four, two, you kind of go to the fours, then the open A string, and then you start again with the chorus, which looks like this. into the main riff there. So that's a pretty easy chorus. There's a couple of guitar layers though you can hear it too. The, the main one was just gonna built off of an A power chord first. And you could pick the open A string, then the D and the G string. So that's the second fret of the D and the, the, the G being played. Then we're gonna do the same thing off of a B power chord. So off the second fret power chord off the A string. And then just move that over to the F sharp power chord off the second fret of the low E string. That's the way it is. Then hit this cup on. And then back to the uh, kind of single note. All right, so that's very simple little chords there. Um, there is a guitar on there instead that does just plays the chords straight. So you can, if you have a second guitarist, one can do that, and then uh, the lead guitarist can do the pegated version of those chords. And then Slash has that little fill in there, which he alters a little bit throughout the song. Uh, you'll hear it played like this when they say nothing done in the chorus. He matches that as an octave off the 12th fret of the A string. So the 12th fret of the A, 14th fret of the G. Make sure you keep that D string uh, muted. So we have this, that octave so at the 12th fret. I'm going to call it the fret that the index finger is playing on. So same octave shape moved down to 11. 
and then nine. Now you'll hear another version of that riff that he extends it a little bit. At the, uh, you'll hear it play like this. So all that he does there is he takes it down to the seventh fret, picks up the chord, the octave, and slides it up to the ninth. So we get this. So you'll hear that as well, and, and then you know. Depending on what chorus is really how you do it. it doesn't matter how you do it. All right, so let's start here now We have our first solo uh, After this chorus we go back in that main riff This is a fun riff to play um, and then over that we have slash with his first solo which is All right, so that is uh, a pre-bend at the 17th fret on the B string. And release that, so it's a whole set pre-bend. Then we have this series of notes. I go by really quick. It's the 14th fret on the B string first, then 16 on the D, then 14 on the G, over to 17 on the B. All right, and now we have this. So that's going to be 14 on the high, 14 fret on the high E string. Then to pull off 17 to 14 on the B, and to that uh, a bend at the 17th fret on the high E string. And then you can do that same lick again. And then, but instead here, you're just going to do some half step uh, bends at the 16th fret on the high E after it. So, it's so one more time. And then this little um, uh, standard blues lick, which is the 14th fret on the high E string, 17, 14 on the B, then 16. So. 16 fret on the G, you gotta bend and release, and then pull off to 14, over to 16 on the D. And then you'll end this with the double stops off the 14th fret of the G and the B. So we have this all together. All right, so then we go back through the verse section again, same stuff we did before, and then the chorus, and the chorus is pretty similar. The only difference here is this chorus ends a little bit different. Right here. Instead of going to that F sharp to end it, it's the same. That last time through, instead of the F sharp, it's up to the C sharp power forward off the fourth fret of the A string. So you're just gonna pick that same piggy pattern there. All right, now from there we get to this interlude section, which is just like the intro. All right, so nothing really new to learn there. Uh, then we get to bridge number one. All right, so that kind of takes us into the rhythm there of the solo. So that is going to start with a really kind of a two guitar players. You could play this a little bit differently. Slash plays his part. He plays this G power chord 
instead of playing a, like a standard power chord shape version. Of it. So, um, so that's going to be the third fret of the low E. The A string is going to be muted. So we don't want that B in there because that's going to make it a G major chord. Open D, open G, and then the third fret of the B in the high E. So we strum that. Then we're going to go to the F sharp power chord off the second fret of the low E. Then back to that G power chord. Then we go to an A power chord, so we have this. Then we go to a D power chord. Uh, so that's just going to be open D, second fret on the G, and four, uh, third fret on the B string. Hit that a couple times. And then the A power chord. A couple times, so it is. So all together. So after that, those you play that chord sequence a few times. Instead of go, going to that A, it goes to the B power chord. Down to the, then down to the A power chord. And then you can play the G power chord kind of the normal way, off the third fret of the low E. And then F sharp power chord, so this. And then it's gonna jump up and grab this this D power chord for the 10th fret. And then it go down to this 7th fret power chord, the B power chord. Um, so this, when you get to that B, that starts the, the rhythm to the uh, guitar solo. So let's check out that rhythm to guitar solo real quick. So that's just the uh, just power chords off the you know, sixth fret, the low E string. So seventh fret there on the low E, then up to the ten, back down, back to ten again. This time come down to the fifth fret, the A power chord. So back to ten again. Hit 10 is always kind of like an in-between chord there, and then back to 7. So it's just pretty much that repeat. It's way this. Repeat. So we have made it to the star of the show, Slash's guitar solo. Um, so I'm going to play through that real quick for you, and then we will check it out uh, phrase by phrase. <laughs> some fun stuff there really the only it's the solo has a lot of stuff that you can kind of repeat just exactly like it is the the hardest riff to do is the very very beginning um, and then after that it's uh, it's fast but it's not that hard to understand there's a lot of repeated licks in there so let's start here with these double stops I'm sorry I'm sorry so we're gonna start with the seventh fret do uh, double stop at the G and the B, played three times. Over to the ninth fret there on the D. 
And then they're gonna go back with the double stops on the G and the B string. Seven, nine, and then kind of bend up those nines there. So you're probably used to double stops for, for now, uh, by now. So we have this. Kind of a little bend. And then we have it a bend there again. And then just go nine, seven, nine, seven. And then to the single notes on the D string, nine, seven, nine. So the stuff like this is really something you just kind of get. It's just kind of a lot of stuff around those double stops and a couple notes on the D string. Uh, so if you know the sound of it, it's easier to recreate than just trying to like nail it down. Like, oh, hit this like three times and this one once and this one half a time. You know, it doesn't work out. So all together we have this. All right, from there though, we go kind of have this, the seventh fret double stops, then nines twice, and then seventh fret a couple times. And then we just go the nine seven over to nine on the D, and then back to those, I kind of rolled into those double stops at nine. So let me just kind of put it together for you a little bit. All right, from here we start this little All right, so this little lick's gonna gonna start with this the ninth fret on the D, then hammer on seven nine. Then back to six and seven. And it goes between that six and seven. It kind of picks it, kind of makes a little staccato sound. Like a few times. So we have this. And a few times. And then he does a little trill between those two notes. Then over to 9 on the D, back to that 6 on the G, and back to this 9 on the D. So this, like I said, this part's a little bit intricate. When you see him play, he doesn't do it the same way twice. He just kind of, it's kind of one of those things. He just... He's just trying to get, he's trying to get there. So he's just kind of going down the scale through it uh, and just kind of doing whatever he feels like doing at, the, at that moment. So we have just kind of... Do that six to nine on the D a couple times. You're gonna hit the nine now a couple times in a row. Down to seven on the D string. Over to nine on the A. Then back to the nine on the D. So like I said, it gets a little bit intricate. Back to the nine on the A. And then the seven on the D. So we had this. Then at 987 on the D. Down to five. So when you get that little ending there, it's just kind of a little, kind of a quick little bend and release, kind of more of like a. He's just kind of accenting it more than anything. The seventh fret on the A string. Kind of bend and release, pull off to five, and then play seven five again. Over to seven on the D, uh, low E string twice. And then, then back to that fifth fret, slight bend of the eighth uh, on the A string. And then seventh fret on the low E again. And he bends it up really big. So that section is a little erratic. I, I get it. So. Uh, the rest of it's not as hard to understand. So, so far we have this. All right, so bend the last seventh fret there. And now we have the next phrase. I'm 
drums stop there. So we have this. Now that's fast and it sounds like it'd be really hard, but it's a lot easier to memorize than what we just did. So we're going to start with the 10th fret B string then. And then he's going to do this lick. 7th fret on the high E, pull off 10 to 7 on the beat. So with this. Up to that 10th fret there, and you're gonna hold it a little bit with some vibrato on the high E string. And then we're gonna do that little lick again. But this. So we, when we. Back to that 10, and then you're gonna do a hammer nine, pull back off, uh, hammer nine to 10, pull back off to the nine. So all together. Over to 10 on the B string. And then seven, hammer nine, pull back off to seven on the high E. So it's kind of the same like as this. Back to that 10 on the B and slide up to 12. So, so far, real slow. I might have missed one in there. So we have to yeah, okay, so when we do it, when we do it fast, it's easy to, to, to understand. Uh, we that 10th fret thing again, then we that lick again. Back to 10. That uh, hammer, nine to 10, pull back off to nine, over to 10 on the B, and then hammer seven to nine, pull off to seven on the uh, high E, over to 10, and here's where I missed. Go back and grab the seventh fret on the high E again, and then now slide from 10 to 12, so. All right, from here we have a little bit of, we have that little same lick, 10th fret on the high E string, pull off 10 to 12 on the B. And there's a slight bend at this, on the 12th fret of the high E string. So, and then you do that lick again, that little, I'm gonna call this a little transition lick because it uses it a lot. And then you're gonna slide into the 14th fret there then do that little lick again by playing 12th fret and pull off 14, 12 on the beat. Let's try this. Uh, that little transition lick again, and then sliding into the 14th fret, I'm sorry, 17th fret on the high E, so real slow. All right, transition look again. And so what I'm doing there is playing that lick on the 14th fret on the high E, then pulling off 17, 14 on the B, and it he ends up with a different note each time. The first note he'll end up with is the 17th fret on the high E string, and then the 17th fret on the B string the second time. So we have this. So he's just doing that little transition lick and then ending at 17 on the high E, then the, then the B, then the high E, then the B. And then he does that little lick one more time. And he'll bend this 17th fret up on the high E string. And when he does that, he catches the 17th fret on the B string. You'll hear that little note in there. And then he'll pick that B string note that's already bent up that you can hear when they kind of come together at the top of the bend. I'll pick that by itself, the B string, and release the no. And 
And when he releases that note, then they'll play 15 on the B, then 16, 14 on the G. You're going to slide 16 to 14 down on the D, 12, 14, 12 on the D, and then slide 14 to 16 on the G. So. All right, now we have, after the solo, we have a, the second bridge, which has a couple of harmonic fills in it. So first, just the chords look like this. back to the chorus. All right, so that's just a B major bar chord. So I'm, instead of just the power chord, you're, you're gonna make sure you get the note on the B string as well. So I'm barring the fourth fret across the D, G, and the B here. So it's a B major chord, you can play like this or like this, but I like to play on my pinky. So B major, then up two frets of the C sharp major, and then up to the D major, the fifth fret. And then you go back down, five, four, two, C sharp, D, all right, so as he does that, the first time you hear that, you hear some harmonics, so it looks like this. All right, so uh, he could have, I don't know if he recorded this. I've seen he plays this a lot with his Beastie Rich, so I don't know if he actually did the harmonics with the with the, uh, at the D and the G string, and then use, use the, use the uh, the trim system on the BC Ridge, or if you do a Les Paul to do it, you have to play the notes and then you know, do that whole bend the neck trick, which I'm not gonna do. So, you know, do it at your own peril. So, but the harmonics are the first ones you hear are the uh, D string and uh, seventh fret harmonic and the G string, so har seventh fret harmonic together. And then hear that a little, little slight little bar dip and then back so since it's so slight he might actually be doing it on his Les Paul and he just kind of slightly bends it um, and then on the third time through you hear a little bit different which is that you play the G string harmonic first the seventh fret and then the seventh fret harmonic on the B string with it and then that same little kind of harmonic bar type. So uh, you can use, you just do it if you don't have a harmonic, but it's, you know, healthier for guitar if you have a tremolo bar to do it that way. All right, so then we're back to the chorus again. Same chorus as before, except we have Slash that starts coming in with his little outro solo over it. So he has this, that kind of thing, which is just kind of, Just playing that 16th fret of the D string over and over again. And then we get to the outro section. Now the outro section um, is pretty much uh, for the rhythm guitar. Uh, guitar part is just the, you know, the main riff. All right, so it's just kind of the main riff uh, that we've already done. But on top of that, we have Slash doing this. So that is uh, more double stops. So kind of this like the double stops of 14, then 16 a few times. Then four, 16, 14, 16 on the D.
Then back to the 14th fret double stops. Back to the 16th uh, on the D string. So we did this so far. And then you're gonna end that riff with, with just the 16th fret double stops, then 14th fret, and the uh, 16 on the D string twice. So all together. Repeat that. And then at the end, you hear this. It's just kind of bending those 16s and then playing 16, 16, 14 a couple times. Oh, down to that 16 on the D, and then we have this lick that he repeats for a while. For a while. So that's just a 17th fret bend there on the B string. Then you're gonna roll from 14 on the high E to 14 on the B. So I did that lick a couple times, and it ended it with a 17th fret bend on the B. So it is. Then we have 14 on the high E, 17 fret. And you're gonna do a kind of a bend and release on that 17th fret a couple times. We have this. And then do that roll from the 14 on the high E to the B again. And then start over. So after you've done that a couple times or a few times, whatever, we we end with this. It's just this. I did that lick earlier. 14th on the high E string, 17th 14 on the B. Bend and release at the 16th fret on the G. Pull off to 14 on the G. Down to a 16 on the D. Then 14 on the D. Then 16, slide down to 14 on the A. Down to the 12th fret. So and then 14, 12, 14 on the low E. Kind of slide that down. So we have the last lick all together. I do believe I missed something there, that last little, I missed that little one on the A string. So when you do that slide from 16 to 14 on the A, then play 12, then play 14, 12 again. So that's what I missed. And then 14, 12, 14 on low E. Something didn't feel right there and I figured it out. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's a pretty in-depth breakdown of this song, but that's what I do, you know? So, um, but it's really got a lot of really fun riffs to play, some great solos by Slash, and it just rocks. It's just a great tune. All right, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for GuitarLessons365.com.